Alright guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we do division uh, using the bus stop and we're also going to include a few decimals in there as well so I can show you how you go about doing them. Uh, so we'll start off with this example here, 159 divided by 3. So we set it up using the bus stop like so and I'm dividing by 3 so whatever you're dividing by goes on the outside and then whatever the first number is, in this case it's 159, that actually goes inside the bus stop like so. Okay, so that's how you set it up. Whatever you're dividing by goes on the outside and then the number you are, be, uh, you are using goes in the bus stop there. Okay, now the f with doing the bus stop, the first thing that people always mess up and which ruins the whole thing is the first step here where you ask yourself how many times does three go into one? So I've got one, how many times does three go into it? Well, it doesn't, okay? It does not go in, so we say it's zero. But what's left over? And people always say three, that's not the case. If you have one and three doesn't go into it, well, how much you got left? You have one left, okay? So just make sure that when you carry that remainder over, you keep it as one. Okay, so keep it as 1. This then turns into a 15. How many 3s go into 15? That's nice, that's just 5. And there isn't a remainder, so that's not a problem. Cross it out if you like, just to show that you've done it. And then how many 3s go into 9? Well, that's again nice. The answer is 3. So the overall answer, 53. So I'm just going to put that in there. So let's have a go at the next one then. So again, bus stop. So draw yourself a quick bus stop. I'm dividing by five, so that goes on the outside, and 285 goes on the inside of the bus stop. So again, I have two. How many times does five go into two? It doesn't, so it's zero. What's left over? Well, I had two, five didn't go into it, so I have two left over. So that now becomes 28. How many fives go into 28? Well, five times five is 25. So it goes in five times. Just like I said, five times five is 25. I've got 28. So what's left over to get there? Well, three. So three gets carried over. And then we go, how many fives go into 35? Seven. So as long as you know your times tables here, you're in business. Now people look at this normally, no matter what year group they're in, and they see their decimal point, and then they suddenly break down and they can't do it. It is exactly the same method. You still draw your bus stop. I'm still dividing by four there, so four goes on the outside, and the first number always goes on the inside. Like so. And you do exactly the same process. How many times does four go into five? Ah, this time it goes in once, but what's left over? Well, 1 times 4 is 4, I've got 5, what's left over? Well, 1 is, so I carry the 1 over and cross it out if you like, just like I've been doing, just to show that it's finished. How many 4s go into 14? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, so it goes in 3 times with a 2 left over, because like I said, 4 times 3 is 12, I have 14, so that leaves me with 2 left over. How many fours go into 24? Well, that's six with no remainder, so I leave it there. Don't forget, though, if there's a decimal point in your question, you just put the decimal point back there. So my answer would be 1.36. I've just realized I didn't put the answer here for that one, which was 57. OK. This one here, 65 divided by 4. So I'm going to use the bus stop again. I'm dividing by 4, and 65 goes in there. How many 4s go into 6? Well, it goes in once. Happy days. What's left over? Well, 1 times 4 is 4. I have 6, so 2 is left over. How many 4s go into 25? Well, 4 times 6 is 24, so it goes in 6 times, and I'm left over with 1. So if you have a remainder in this case, this is what you do. Don't put R1, okay, that's just a bit silly. What we do is, if we know we need to keep going, all I do is I just put a decimal point, 
and I add a few zeros. Okay, you can add more if you want, you can go on forever, because 65.00000 is just the same as 65. But I need to carry on because I had a remainder. So just a reminder, 4 times 6 is 24, I've got 25, so my remainder was 1. So I can now continue to do my calculation. How many 4s go into 10? Well, 2. So 2 times 4 is 8. I had 10, so 2 is left over. I'm just going to cross that out and cross that out because I'm done with them. How many 4s go into 20? Well, 5. With no remainder, so I don't. If I if I did have a remainder there, I could add a few more zeros and keep going. In this case, I didn't. It cancelled. Absolutely fine. Happy days. I'm done. I'm just going to remember because I added my decimal point. I also need to do that for my answer. So the answer there would be 16.25. Okay, so don't be put off if you have something like that. Just put a decimal point, add a few zeros, and keep on going. The next one here. 756 divided by 18, exactly the same process. I'm still going to draw my bus stop. I'm dividing by 18, so it goes on the outside, and 756 goes on the inside. Now, with all the other ones, when I was dividing by 3, by 5, by 4, or by 4, I'm pretty hot on my times tables for them. I'm not so great on my 18 times table. So all I've done here is I've just written out the 18 times table. Really easy to do, definitely worth the 30 seconds or so it takes you. 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus 18. So you can write out your 18 times table. It's going to help. And it's just exactly the same process. So how many 18s go into 7? Well, none. What's left over? Well, I still have my 7 left over. How many 18s go into 75? Well, let's have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, no, that's too far. So it goes in 4 times. But 4 times 18 is 72. So what's left over to get to 75? Well, 3 is left over. And then how many 18s go into 36? Well, there we go. It goes in twice with no remainder. So the answer there is 42. So you, with that question there, don't be afraid just to write out the times table a little bit to help you do your bus stop. The next one here. Lots of people, again, struggle with this, but there's a really neat trick that you can do. So we've got 3.6 divided by 0 0.4. Now, what you can do is if you times the top number by 10 and the bottom number by 10. So as long as you times them both by the same, and therefore you change the question, or change the fraction even, you could say, yeah, change the fraction to 36 over 4, you get the answer 9. Now the reason why 3.6 divided by 0 0.4 is 9, as well as the 36 divided by 4, well, think about it. When you're dividing, you're saying, how many times does this go into this. So the, how many times does the bottom number go into the top number? So the answer is 9, so it goes in 9 times. Now if you make this 10 times bigger, and the bottom 10 times bigger, it's still going to go in the same amount, because you made the top 10 times bigger and the bottom 10 times bigger. It can't go in any more times, it's still going to go in 9 times. So what we do is if we change this to a whole number, change this to a whole number, by times in both by 10, key thing, must times it by the same thing, changes it to 36 over 4, much easier to do that, which is obviously 9, as opposed to doing that. I'm going to do the same trick here. I'm just going to rewrite it so it's like this. So I like to think of it as a numerator and denominator. So 116.9 divided by 0 0.07. Okay. Now the top one, I only need to times by 10 to make it a whole number. But this one down here, the denominator, I need to times by 1, 2, 3. So I need to times that by 1,000. So remember up here, when I times it both by 10, I've got to times these both by the same amount to make sure my answer is the same. So I know I don't need to, but I am going to times this one by 1,000. And I'm also going to times this one by 1,000 as well. So I have 116,900 there, because I just moved the decimal point three times, so one, two, three, and I'm going to divide that by, again, decimal point, one, two, three, so that's just going to be seven. Okay, so these two are equal. So whatever you times the, it by, make sure you do the same to the top, so your answer stays the same. 
This still looks a bit horrible, but we've just learned how to do that. We're just going to use the bus stop. I'm just dividing by seven. So here we go. I'm dividing by seven, so seven on the outside. And I've got my 116,900 underneath my bus stop. How many times does seven go into one? It doesn't. Carry the one over. How many times does seven go into 11? It goes in once with four left over. How many fours go into 46? Well, six times seven is 42, so it goes in six times. And like I said, seven times six is 42, so what's left over? Well, four. How many sevens go into 49? Well, that's easy, because 49 is a square number. Funny enough, it's seven times seven. So it goes in seven times without a remainder. How many times does seven go into zero? Zero. And how many times does seven go into zero? Zero. So there's your answer, guys, 16,000. 700. Have I done that right? Let's just check. One, two, three. Yep, I think that's right. I'm just going to get my calculator here because I've written the answers down before, but I think I've. Uh... Yep, that's right. Yep, double checked it. Yep, so there's my answer. Correct. I've even checked on the calculator. Just uh, doubt with myself for a moment then. Okay, hopefully that helps, guys. Cheers.